Okay, you're going to want your graphing calculator nearby before we start filling this in, and hopefully you have it printed off. Uh, if you want to use some colored pens or pencils with me, that might um, make it a little easier to sort this out, but you certainly don't have to. Uh, there are going to be some times when I ask you to pause the video and do some work, though, but um, it might be easier than uh, inserting several different clips. I'll need you to let me know later what you think about that, all right? Okay, so to start with, you know, I've got these examples down here. I want us to go up here and name them. So when we look at this format, hopefully we know the name of that format is standard. And the format for standard is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, if we look over here to the middle example, that is in factored form. In factored form, there's a couple different ones. I'm going to show you what we had used. I think it was chapter three. We could also, you know, say it was x, I don't know, we could do m or n, p, q, but we specifically used subtraction here and labeled those r sub 1 and r sub 2, and I'll get to that in just a minute. All right, and then this last one is in vertex form, and that is right there. Okay, so given these three forms, if we use this specific example, what I'm asking here is if we can identify some um, uh, numbers here, values for A, B, and C, all right? So see if you can do that. We'll see if we agree here. And because this is plus, that must be negative 5, right? Okay, hopefully we're doing all right with that. Let's go and identify values here like A and R sub 1 and R sub 2. Okay, well, I don't see an A. Since this is subtraction and this is already subtraction, that's going to be 1. Well, this must be... Right? To get that to simplify to be addition, that must be subtracting a negative. Okay. All right, hopefully we're good there. We're going to move over here and identify A and H and K. Let's see if you can do that for a sec. Huh? Another issue where this is addition, but our format says subtraction, so it must be subtracting a negative, right? Same thing here. Well, our format is addition, so to get subtraction, it must have been that we were adding a negative, right? So h is negative 2, and k is negative 9, okay? Now hopefully you remember um, this next part. Um, I'm going to help you fill in just a reminder down here on the sides and then I'm going to have you pause the video and do this part. But x-intercepts, x-intercepts, do you remember? y equals zero. That's why we called those zeros. Also solutions that we're going to get to pretty soon. Vertex. Is that maximum or minimum point on the parabola, right? So that's a minimum, right? And if we went like this, the brownie face one was a maximum, right? Okay, and then the y-intercept, well, got it? It's 
when x equals 0. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you to pause the video. What I want you to do is go back in here and see if you can fill these in. All right. And if you can't, that's okay. Fill in what you can. And I'm going to do that while you pause and do it as well. And when you come back, we'll be writing these down, all right? Okay, so hopefully you took you know a pause when you were asked to find some of these points given the format that we had. Uh, it was easiest for us to find the zeros in factored form, the vertex in vertex form, and the y-intercept in standard form. Okay. So we're going to skip this part for now and then if we look at this next section that says of the above these three um, kind of features, right? Which feature do you see in this function? Well, it was the y-intercept, right? And in our case, that was the negative 5 part, or up here. And so, well, what's that in the relationship between this feature and that format? is it's the c value, right? Okay. Which is 0, c. If we come over here, say, well, in this function, what's the feature that we see? Okay. Well, we see the negative 1 here. And technically, you know, that positive 5 Right. And what is those are the x intercepts. Okay. Well, we took that root one and root two, and that was because they were we made them into this subtraction format, right? And over here when we were in vertex form, well, what do we see? Well, technically, we saw a positive 2 and a negative 9. But that is the vertex, right? That is the h and the k. Okay, so. If we wanted to go back and try to fill these in, well, I'd have to convert these forms. If I want to know what the y-intercept is, I have to take my factor form, multiply it. If I want to know what the vertex form, or the, the I'm sorry, the y-intercept, I have to take vertex form, multiply it. Okay. So I'd have to take the standard form, factor it, to get this form. Now I could figure out what the roots were. I could take the standard form and complete the square and put it in vertex form. Now I could figure out what the vertex was, right? Here I'd be looking for x minus root 1 and x minus root 2. Here I'd be looking for x minus h squared plus k. So I could find the vertex here. I could find the factors here now. And hmm, I don't know if 
you recognize this, I hope you do, but these, let's see if I can get this to work. Huh. Those are all three forms. And if I graph that, it's all going to be the same graph. So these were equivalent functions. They're all the same function, right? So I'm going to have you pause right now, and I want you to do a sketch of this graph. You know, use your graphing calculator. I want you to, it's kind of fun if you have one of these X, um, 84 plus CEs where they have the color. You can kind of see that they start with one color and then as it graphs your second equation and your third equation they use different colors. And you can just see it overlaps, right? But pause right now. Um, see if you can just sketch that graph. I don't think you need to do it all three times. I'll give you a second. And hopefully, what you saw or got graphed was something like this. I know they're not easy to make, right? Um, something I do want you to add to the bottom of your notes is a reminder about that axis of symmetry. Right? So the axis of symmetry, we can find it in the vertex. It's that H value of the vertex. But if we don't want to go to the trouble of converting a standard two vertex form, I could still find it by taking the opposite of the B value and dividing it by 2A. So remember the axis of symmetry is the X value of the vertex, that H, and it divides our parabola into these two um, congruent halves, right? Okay, so just something that we're going to need to remember in the future. All right, now what I need you to do now on your own is you're going to flip this over and practice this. So you're going to, let's see if I can get this to focus for us. Of course not. Um, for each of these, you're going to, part A is find which form the function is in. Is it in standard vector to vertex? Part B, what's the feature or points that the form reveals? Is it y-intercept? Is it zeros? Is it the vertex? And for part C, well, what is that feature or point for that? So, for example, if we did this first one together, well, part A, which form is this in? Standard, right? Actually, I'll let you just abbreviate it, okay? B, what feature or does this form reveal to us? Y intercept, right? And C will identify it. And for us, as an ordered pair, y intercept is when x is 0, y is going to be negative 5. Okay? Now I'm going to post the key to this. Um, you go ahead and, and try it yourself and then see how you did.